To many, ACLU is synonymous with fighting for civil rights and liberties in courtrooms across America. But did you know the organization was founded in the same year women's suffrage was added to the Constitution? This wasn't a coincidence. ACLU's founders, organizers, and notable lawyers were veterans of the fight for women's rights. From over a century ago to today, with the expertise of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Polly Murray, the first black person to receive the highest law degree from Yale, incredible legal minds have fought hard for our reproductive rights, from courtrooms to the polls. In 1920, capturing the momentum from the women's suffrage movement, Crystal Eastman co-founded a group that became known as the American Civil Liberties Union. You could say that Eastman is ACLU's underappreciated founding mother. Our first major win for reproductive rights came after an activist for sex education and birth control was convicted of sending obscene materials through the U.S. Postal Service. The pamphlet, The Sex Side of Life, an explanation for young people caused a big stir. So the ACLU helped get the conviction overturned. Beyond protecting our right to speak freely about our sexual health, we have also worked towards protecting the right to control our reproductive health care decisions. In the 60s, the ACLU filed an amicus brief in Griswold v. Connecticut, which established the right for married couples to get and use contraception. This ruling by the Supreme Court in Griswold set the precedent, which the ACLU and others used to challenge restrictive abortion laws. A year earlier, Dorothy Kenyon and Harriet Papel approached ACLU's national board to recognize restrictive abortion bans as a violation of civil liberties. Their work led to the first campaign to repeal New York's abortion law. Kenyon argued it is a mockery of democracy with its supposed human rights and dignity for all that women should be forced by the government to bear children against their will. Ultimately, Kenyon joined forces with Polly Murray to persuade New York state legislature to legalize abortion one of the first states to do so. A few years later, ACLU President Norman Dorson was on the team of lawyers representing the plaintiffs in Roe v. Wade. This ruling by the Supreme Court established that a woman had the constitutional right to end a pregnancy. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. We argued a companion case to Roe, Doe v. Bolton, and the court overturned various aspects of a Georgia law regulating abortion stating it interfered with a woman's right to decide in consultation with her physician to terminate her pregnancy. 1973 was also a busy year for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, founder of ACLU's Women's Rights Project. Not only did she argue her first case before the Supreme Court, that year she and Brenda Fagan also filed a federal lawsuit on behalf of a black woman who had been forcibly sterilized by the state of North Carolina's eugenics program. Ginsburg and Fagan argued that the state had violated this woman's constitutional rights and targeted her because she is a woman, because she is black, and as a method of punishing women who bear children out of wedlock. Our reproductive rights are intersectional, which means multiple systems of oppression, such as racism, sexism, ableism, and economic inequality, combine to control our bodies and access to healthcare, especially for marginalized groups like black and brown people and people with disabilities. In the years after the Roe decision, efforts to prevent people from getting legal abortion care began, focusing primarily on people with low incomes, young people, and people of color. Anti-abortion politicians found a way to limit our newly won rights by passing the Hyde Amendment, a devastating ban that denies coverage for abortion care to people who qualify for Medicaid. In response, the ACLU went to court to restore Medicaid coverage for abortion. While initially successful, the Supreme Court ultimately upheld the ban, making abortion more theoretical than accessible for people with low incomes. We took our continued fight to the state courts and legislatures, and together with partner organizations, secured Medicaid coverage for abortion in a number of states. By the 1990s, a case called Planned Parenthood v. Casey reached the Supreme Court. Many legal experts believe the court would use this case as a vehicle to overturn Roe. That didn't happen, though the court dramatically weakened the protection for abortion rights. Let me be clear about what the court has done. The right to choose abortion is no longer a fundamental constitutional right. This opened the floodgates to thousands of state laws that made it harder and harder to get abortion care. After Casey, ACLU brought cases around the country, even as far as Guam, and succeeded in striking down scores of laws that prevented people from accessing the care they need. 
But that didn't stop states from floating bans as trial balloons as the makeup of the Supreme Court shifted. The justices that I'm going to appoint will be pro-life. When Mississippi passed a new ban on abortion in 2018, Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant has signed some of the nation's toughest restrictions on abortions into law. It clearly violated both Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey. A Mississippi clinic challenged the ban on behalf of their patients, represented by the Center for Reproductive Rights in a case that would be ultimately known as Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization. And that brings us back to today. The Supreme Court's Dobbs decision, which overturned Roe v. Wade, is an outrageous attack on women's rights and reproductive freedom. And the effects were immediate and far-reaching. By the end of 2022, we saw 15 states enforcing bans on abortion, taking away the right to decide whether and when to have a child for around 20 million people who can get pregnant. The ACLU will continue to show up for reproductive rights, no matter how hard it gets. And there's already some hope. In the midterm elections, reproductive freedom advocates won every ballot measure campaign across the country, from Kansas to Kentucky, Michigan to California. The ACLU worked with state partners to advance reproductive health care and protect the right to abortion. Our work doesn't stop here. There are more threats to come. Anti-abortion extremists in power will stop at nothing to push abortion bans, enforce the cruelest of laws, prosecute people who access abortion care, and threaten doctors with jail time if they provide that care. So while we continue to work to build back a strong right to access abortion, we have also launched a new abortion criminal defense initiative to help those facing prosecution for providing, supporting, or obtaining abortion care. Reproductive rights have been important to us since our founding and will continue to work with our partners to ensure everyone is able to get the care they need to have a child or end a pregnancy. These rights, along with the right to marry who you love, to access gender-affirming care, to get birth control, to have your vote counted, they're all interconnected and the threats against them are growing. This fight is far from over. No matter where you live, you can join the fight and make a difference. Together, we will win.